Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Wednesday, July 12th, 527 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with tonight's Revere Market Insight video. State of the market, we are in an uptrend. You can see over here on the trend gauge, we've had these four arrows on here for uh, quite a while now and what that represents if you're uh, as you know if you're a long time listener is that all five of the major indexes that we track in these videos are trending above their short term 21 day moving average medium term 50 day moving average and long term 200 day moving average we additionally track market leadership that is also acting bullishly in an uptrend the only uh, concern continues to be the extended nature. And if you're going to be concerned about something, it might as well be uh, concerned with something acting too well instead of too bad. NASDAQ 100, led by the big seven uh, stocks, extended historically from the 50-day moving average. NASDAQ, I talked earlier this week about the steps they're taking to uh, spread out uh, reduce the um, concentration at the top. Didn't hold any of those stocks back today, though. So what happened today? Before the, mar uh, before the market opened, CPI, Consumer Price Index Report, came out, and both the headline and the core numbers were below expectations, both on month over month and year over year, and that is a good sign for the market, and the rally continued on that. Uh, strong open uh, strength most of the day, a little bit of a pullback. We actually closed slightly below where we opened, but not given anything back after having rallied the two prior days is certainly uh, bullish action. And probably the best thing that came out of that is weakness in the dollar and also the odds of a second rate hike by the end of the year fell substantially still uh market is still pricing in a 25 basis point or a quarter point cut uh later this month when the fed meets but as far as one for the rest of the year uh not happening as uh, a tame inflation report can do the the fed's job uh both both things uh seek to uh cool wages and make the economy uh, run, not necessarily wages, but cool overall prices uh, and working off the chance of additional uh, rate hikes. So here are the final numbers on the day. RG8, our eight ETF growth composite up 0.74%, S&P 500 gapped up 0.85, closed up 0.74, NASDAQ 100, the leader on the day up 1.26, Dow the laggard only up a quarter percent, mid caps up 0.7, Russell 2000 small caps up 1.05, global diversified 6040 stock and bond up 0.96%. Emerging markets and foreign stocks actually outperformed uh, US stocks today, and bond prices were higher, which means the yields came down. Uh, that's good for the market. In house grotection, our flagship portfolio up approximately 1.25 percent on the day. Let's dive right into the details and we'll start with the S&P 500 and um, I started talking last Friday about uh, this three to four week base that we've uh, been concentrated in uh, this consolidation after a nice uptrend prior to that. Well, very clear breakout from that today. So the question is, uh, on a pullback, what happens? Do we get a pullback? Usually gaps are filled, but they don't have to be filled. And by, look, they weren't filled here uh, and we've been rallying ever since. So nothing is a given. Uh, in fact, the, the NASDAQ 100 gap was filled today. So it, it didn't show the, the same breakaway strength that the S&P did. But all we look for now is uh, any pullback to be contained by, uh, preferably the ADMA, uh, the 21 EMA, as it continues on a very uh, steep angle going higher. So we just monitor pullbacks uh, as well as the action in leading stocks should the market pullback. NASDAQ 100 uh, closed 
it, it got above the top uh, of the similar base, but uh, closed right at the top of it, 372.85. The prior high, 372.82, the close today. So poked its head above it, uh, closed back inside the range, but just barely. Did show relative strength today uh, after weakening a bit on the first two trading sessions of this week on that news of the rebalancing on the NASDAQ 100, but that didn't stop. Uh, those stocks from having a good day today. Uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average also tried to poke above this 34,589 level. Today's high being uh, 34,586. So didn't quite break out, still finished inside the range. So uh, that is still in uh, the very similar base. Let's go to mid caps, MDY. Broke out earlier uh, than the S&P 500 did. Four straight up days now in mid caps. If you want to, you can count this nice move off the bottom as uh, day one if you want to. After that pullback when it held the 21, but um, big strength there in uh, mid caps and small caps breaking out also, poking its head above the top of the. Uh, handle yesterday following through today did close in the bottom of the range, but um, how can you complain about uh, action like this with this beautiful bounce off this 182-ish level uh, all the way up to 192 in four sessions? So those are the major indexes. No bad news there. Let's go to uh, the VIX. What the VIX do today? Well, market up, VIX down, breaking back below the 21. Uh, exponential moving average. That's the green line here. We like that. Down 8.8% on the day. Uh, still inside the range. So if the S&P broke out to the upside, the, the VIX still hasn't broken out to the downside. This panic day uh, last week probably has something to do with resetting the expectation there. Uh, but uh, 1354 on a close there back below. Uh, this 21 EMA, that's something we'll be keeping an eye on. Good news there. Really good news if you're a dollar bear. Four, five days down consecutively now, broke below the bottom of the range. Uh, so breakdown with the dollar corresponding, corresponds with the breakout by the S&P 500. Uh, this 2860 to 28, 2867 to 2872, uh, range held. Now we see what happens when we get down uh, to the bottom area of the range here uh, around 2820-ish. Uh, if we continue down that far, uh, we could bounce from here. And uh, you know if the dollar was down big, the expectation is for uh, precious metals to act well, and they really responded today. Silver up 4.5%, breaking above the downtrending 50-day moving average. Gold, nice move, up 1.35%. So now gold, uh, silver, and also gold stocks, which I'll show in a second, back above this 21-day moving average, which is now flattening out. Now we're contending with the downtrending 50-day moving average. But for precious metals to work, you need weakness in the dollar. You got the weakness in the dollar today. And look at the strength in gold stocks, up 5.2%. On GDX, we took advantage of this on the gap up by buying uh, the NUGT two times ETF up over 10% on the day, uh, actually 11.05% up on the day. And note, it's just uh, what I've been talking about for a while. They couldn't get through this declining 21 day moving average when they finally did. Uh, they did it explosively with volume and closing near the top of the range, and in fact, took out the declining 50 day moving average. Uh, to go with it. So great action uh, on GDX today. Basically every gold stock up. These things definitely move in packs. It's difficult to pick a leader. When we play gold stocks, we uh, most of the time play it with uh, GDX or NUGT. Uh, we picked NUGT this morning on the gap up and uh, we're rewarded nicely. Uh, how about Bitcoin? Going down 1.16%, uh, this is really coiling for a move. Whether that move will be lower or higher uh, is yet to be determined. But you can see this consolidation area here, second consolidation area right above the 50-day moving average and the 21-day moving average. 16, a key level here 
uh, we're keeping an eye on this because there are a lot of stocks tied to this. Let's talk about a couple of the ETFs we're tracking. Uh, BLOK, this is a blockchain ETF uh, acting fantastic. Another one, uh, WGMI, also acting great. And stocks like Mara uh, and Riot had big runs. Uh, looking for them to, you know, cool off a little bit after, as to, after all, they've gone up like, geez, 70% here uh, in the last three weeks. So they front running uh, the Bitcoin spot ETF. There's been a lot of talk about that, but we're keeping an eye on this. Absolutely. Let's flip the bonds now. Bond prices up across the board. That means this breakdown in prices, breakout in rates has failed for now. Uh, into the 21-day moving average, BND, let's take a look at TLT, failed to break down on the TLT, back above that 100 level. Let's flip to the rates themselves. This will be very apparent here. What we're talking about, TNX, uh, this 40 level, uh, big level, abandoned baby back here in March, broke back above it and stayed there for three days, broke back below it yesterday, continuing down uh, to the downside, very clearly breaking above the, above that 40 level. Now into the top of the prior base, which uh, that's this area here where this 39, 3850-ish area uh, was support uh, was resistance until it was broken out last week. Let's see what happens. We were back there again. Will the uh, this area flip to support and we'll make another shot at higher rates? This is something very, there's a lot of moving parts here and they're all uh, interconnected and we're keeping an eye on all of them and we'll report on all of them uh, in these nightly videos. TYX, very clear failed breakout here too. You've got the 40 level back here in February. You've got it failing in mid-May. We broke out last week and today back below it. Uh, we'll see what happens, how far this pullback goes and uh, what that'll mean for rates, but inflation definitely not indicating uh, higher for longer. The market, as I said, still pricing in one rise, but none after that for the rest of the year, but there's a lot of economic data that can come out uh, between now and the end of the year. So that's all the uh, key inner asset correlation that we address each night. Let's go to the tail of the tape. A lot of green highlights here. Green is good if you're a bull namely the dollar breakdown uh, highlighted in green and the breakout of those that eight month high on rates also failed. Uh, as I mentioned, headline and core below expectations and now we're saying only one hike. We'll see. Thursday morning we get a little bit more inflation data, but it's producer uh, inflation data, the PPI report. Uh, if uh, it's not showing being passed on to the consumer, it's likely that this report will be a non-event, but we want to uh, watch what's going on either way. Day count up three, 28-day rally, second day above the ADMA, 32nd day above the 21, and highlighted in green, the S&P breaks out of the four-week base. Uh, good news there. Now the question is, can we hold that breakout? Expectations remain positive. They've been positive for weeks now. Uh, still 7% above that 50-day moving average, which is a bit extended, but uh, it's bull market action. We'll see what happens after the close on Friday when the realignment comes out and then how things trade going in uh, to the effective date on that. Uh, let's see. You can see the action intraday. Let's go to what was strong today. Pick, that's base metal miners. GSX is gold, silver, gold and silver stocks. Definitely the leader today. Banks, solars, building stocks, ITB, acting fantastic. We're, uh, we cashed some gains on nail today, up over 15% in three trading sessions, and semiconductors acting well. On the downside, yields the dollar. Industrials and uh, healthcare were the only two sectors, two major sectors that were down today. Software and, in particular, cyber stocks, uh, Actually, the overall software on the back of Microsoft ended up up on the ended up positive on the day. It's just the cyber stocks, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and IYT transports, uh, they were down. They ended flat, so uh, not down, but not good either. So uh, here's our highlighted stocks. We're going to talk about that. It'll be focused on cyber stocks, but we'll be doing the portfolio today. Added to NRGU. 
bought Nugget, as I mentioned, also bought you. Very nice uh, tight action uh, around the top of this base. Uh, after a big move up, this is a volatile stock over 6% ATR, uh, but it's been consolidating nicely over the last couple of weeks, not above the pivot too high. Uh, good risk reward here, in my opinion. We took a starter position on that. We did, uh, let's look at ITB here. Uh, look, look at these big three up days. It's extended 5.4% from the 21 nail, however, which is what we bought uh four days ago extended 15 percent from the 21 ema we sold half of that into strength today for about a 15 percent gain uh nrgu we added uh to this you can see making a higher high close near the bottom of the range but the breakout is clear seems like a good spot to get on oils especially with uh the the uh, outlook of a hard landing being uh reduced uh every day and I know that this is below the 200 day moving average, but we buy it based on the charts of the 10 stocks. That's uh, what we're tracking because this is a derivative off of the uh, prices of those 10 stocks. And uh, Nugget, this is uh, what we bought this morning. Again, GDX with the breakout, Nugget the derivative of that. Uh, so that raises our exposure to uh, adjusted beta of 2.31. Bottom line for the day, rally continues on a cool CPI report, only one more rate hike. That's what the market's thinking right now. Uh, we talked about the biggest, the best sector today being uh, gold stocks, the worst. I'm going to look at these charts here. So a report came out, despite the bullish action today, that Microsoft uh, has some new products that they're uh, accelerating their entry into the cybersecurity space. And the response to that was that cybersecurity stocks sold off. So I'm going to show three ETFs very quickly. CIBR, this is the preferred one that we track, uh, down 1.14%. Hack is another one, down 1.4%. Bug is a third ETF, down 1.7%. Uh, and then the five leading cybersecurity stocks, net is security and networking, but we'll start here. The biggest move down was Palo Alto. That's just a brutal move, uh, a former leader, everybody cashing their chips off of that. And one of the rules that we try to do when we get a nice gain and something continues to run up the ADMA, and we were not in this, but when it breaks the ADMA after a big run, take some off. Um, we do it all the time. If it sets up and moves again, you can add it back. But this is a massive breakdown today. Uh, I didn't have to worry about trading it because we weren't in it, but I'm certainly glad of that. But it went through the 21-day moving average like a hot knife through butter, and that's an ugly close for Palo Alto. Other leaders in that group, Fortinet, broke out uh, earlier this week on Monday, pulled back, just bounced off the ADMA, only down 2%. Actually, a pretty good-looking candle uh, for that. The entry into the cyber, th these companies do... Uh, provide different functions and I'm not clear on exactly what function is different from one to another but obviously Palo Alto uh, got hit the worst but Zscaler also hit hard uh, down 6.6 percent breaking below the 21 EMA that was setting up nicely uh, CrowdStrike down 3.1 percent also was setting up nicely did hold the 50-day moving average and net networking security uh combination stock down 5.5 percent breaking back below the 21. uh so cyber stocks uh you gotta look at them uh as as uh will can they recover will they recover very often headline hits a stock for a day or two and it recovers but uh that was a substantial move down, especially in the leader, Palo Alto, and it just may need another base before uh, it gets back to its leadership capabilities after this. I mean, this was a really nice long base uh, that it put in and it broke out of, strongly rode the eight up just the way we want to see it, hit the pivot plus 20% before pulling back, but that was a, that was a big sell-off today, 185% above average volume. And uh, let's see, we'll take a look at a couple of stocks that we hold and how, how they did today. Celsius, uh, undercut reclaimed the 21 today, looking really nice, up 2.8% on the day. Uh, that 
certainly bolstered the portfolio as well as SMCI, very volatile stock, but uh, nice day today. Opened red, finished green. That's what you like to see. Uh, NVIDIA, the, the biggest, our biggest individual position had the biggest individual gains and it's up over 440 after hours today. Just the basically the number one stock in the market. Uh, and uh, a couple of laggards today, LYV, uh, their uh, Ticketmaster had some problems with Taylor Swift tickets. I don't really know the details on that, but uh, down on above average volume, uh, still a leader, still holding the 8 EMA. And DT, after a nice breakout, pulled back on below average volume. This is what you want to see, 28% below average volume after two very strong up days with it going basically from 50 up to uh, 55, 10% move in two days, pulled back 1.56% uh, after making a higher high. So those those two rested uh, in the portfolio today. And with that, I'm going to wrap it up. As always, I'd like to hear from you. The email is Don at .com, or you can uh, reach my partner, Dan Stewart, if you're interested in opening an account. He's Dan at RiveraAsset.com, or you can call us at 855 Real Wealth. That's 855 732 5932. Remember, it's not how much you make in the markets, it's how much you can keep. Our flagship portfolio is called Growtection, where we, uh, combination of growth and protect. We Right now, we're in growth mode with the market participating. Last year, we were in protect mode during the bear market, very similar to how we dodged COVID. We avoided most of this uh, drawdown last year. When the market writes itself, we get back in. We've got technical signals that we outline five nights a week on video plus a weekend podcast. If you're interested in this approach, give us a shout. And with that, I'm going to wrap up the video for Wednesday, July 12th. This is Don Vandenboer with Revere Asset telling it like it is. Thanks for listening and have a great day.